Um, let's go to Ephesians chapters number six. Verses number eight. We're both going to preach today. I don't know how. Can we give a microphone? Go to 1 Corinthians 14. Let two or three prophets speak. I said, if there's something revealed to the one who's sitting down, let the one who's speaking be silent. And let the one who's sitting down speak. I don't know how it's going to happen. But I'm just going to speak as the Holy Spirit leads. And I know what it is going to be some stuff. Uh, um, 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 that is going to be frequently dropping as well. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now there are different strategies. Can you set my mic correctly? Ephesians 6, we're going to read. I want us to start with verses number 12 for the sake of context. Um, verses number 12, please. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Oh my God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this aeon, which is world or age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, since we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against his ranking spirit, what should be our response? Our response should be to take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins get about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, by which you shall be able to quench all the fairy darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, normally when we read the full armor, Sikhina La, Verse number 17, where Paul Ebala Kona, the last weapon, which he calls the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, I want to establish something here before we can check other things. Number one, you can't have the, the spirit of God. You can't claim to be led by the Holy Ghost when you don't have the word of the Lord. Because the sword of the spirit is what? So. How the Holy Spirit operates is by the word. So you can't be void of God's word and claim that you are led by the Holy Spirit. And you can't go against the word of the Lord while you are claiming that you are led by the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit is going to move, he needs a sword. And his sword is the word of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I want to bring your attention to something way more significant and deeper set up. In verse 17, it says, we take up the helmet of salvation. We take up the word, the, the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Oh, verse number 18, he continues with the full armor. So if full armor does not end there, if full armor continues to verse number 18, because who verse number 17 doesn't have a full stop. But who verse number 17 opens up to a new truth or another layer of the of the full armor of God. And he says one of the weapons which is included in the full armor is praying. Always with all prayer and supplication. Not praying anywhere but in the spirit. So praying always with all prayer is part of the full armor. Now, what is a weapon between a gun and a bullet? 
What is the weapon? Is the, is the gun the weapon or the bullet? The gun. The gun. Or the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> eh? what, 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 what is the weapon between a bow and an arrow? Which one is, an, is a weapon? Both. Why? Because the bullet is harmful, but you can't launch it without a gun. The arrow is harmful, but you can't launch it without a bow. The weapons are harmful, but you can't launch them without prayer. So you can have all the other items of the armor. You are like a man carrying bullets without a gun. So you don't have a dispensing system by which you can launch the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. You don't have that dispensing system by which you can lift up the shield of faith. You have all the weapons but you don't have that dispensing system. That dispensing system is praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching the ant with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So, full armor is not complete. It is not full if it doesn't include praying always. Hallelujah. So when you pray always, you are practicing the full armor. Praise God. Now, you are going to find Paul to take unto yourself. So if full armor, you can't declare that you are wearing it. But you wear it. You don't declare it. Because we have minimized this reality. Go to verses number 13 again. Verse number 13. We have minimized the reality of the full armor where unto, it doesn't say where unto, say that you are going to take. Meaning this is a literal thing. It's a literal thing. It's not, you can't say, I put on the breastplate of righteousness if you are not living in righteousness. But someone who's living in righteousness doesn't need to say, I take the breastplate of righteousness because your, your, your righteous living equals to the breastplate of righteousness. So if you don't live righteous, your, your breast is exposed. <laughs> You should we pray right now. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. No, but these are not matters of declaration. These are matters of taking unto. It's something you put on literally. It's not something you declare that you are putting on. So your life of righteousness, it becomes now your breastplate in the spirit. Your hope for the coming salvation becomes your helmet of salvation. Because a helmet of salvation is hope for the coming salvation. Give me 1 Thessalonians 5, verses number 8. I'm checking for this verse. Oh my God. What does that scripture there say? helmet of salvation. So book breastplate from here, the helmet of salvation. Okay? Now, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on what? The breastplate of what? Of faith and what? And love. What does faith and love equal to? Righteousness. Hang it. What, what, which, what, what, which word summarizes the law? Love. What was Abraham given righteousness for? Faith. So he believed it was credited to him as what? Righteousness. And the fulfillment of the law is what? Is love. So love and faith equals to righteousness. So the breastplate of love and faith is a breastplate of righteousness. So Paul is breaking it down here. And then he says, and for a helmet, 
What is for the helmet? The hope of what? Of salvation. Because there's a salvation past, there's a salvation present, but there's a salvation coming. So a salvation that is coming, Iliona eba isi kogo sako senti ndiso. Isi kogo sako senti ndiso yini, itemba lenti ndise zayo. Mafundu 1 Peter 1, verses number 5. Just scroll through the scriptures very quickly. 1 Peter 1, verse number 5. Utu 1 Peter 1, verses number 5. Uti, we hope for the coming salvation. So there is a coming salvation who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So there's a salvation that is going to be ready to be revealed in the last time. So the moment we hope to receive that salvation, our heads are covered with the helmet. Remember what Paul said. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4 from verse 13, I do not want you to be ignorant about them that fall asleep. For the Lord, will, the Lord himself will come with a, a, a trumpet sound and the voice of the archangel. We will not uh, precede those who are dead in Christ, but they shall rise first. And then we shall be changed. We who are still alive and remain shall be changed. And we together shall be caught up and meet in the clouds. And we will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I interest ya mu verse uti nuti uti, but I will not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not. So for me to keep my mind sane when I lose a loved one who is in Christ. Utu Paul, there is a strategy. Yo uti nginga tabu ginje ngo munto ngenali temba. Leli temba kulu mangalo laglo agi enu chesu. The hope he's speaking about here is not Jesus, but the hope he's speaking about here is the resurrection of the dead. So, Uti, I cannot be sorrowful as if the person who died in Christ is never going to rise again. I will be sorrowful, but I have a hope. This hope has become a helmet. It keeps my mind sane because I hope in the coming salvation. So, when the Lord comes with the coming salvation, they who are dead but died in Christ shall rise again and we shall meet them again. So, a helmet of salvation is the hope for the coming salvation. Amen. So you are hoping in the rapture. Vula mm-hmm. verse number 18. Give me verse number 18 of this of this chapter. Verse number 18. Oh, take comfort one another with these words. Do what? Verse number 18 quickly here. Comfort. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Which words? That the Lord is going to come. Amen. So, lendo ishuguti. I, I, I may be believing God for money, but if the money doesn't come, I won't lose my mind. Because there is something that is surely going to come. It's a salvation. Because he was promised is faithful. So I can believe God for a house. I can believe God for anything that I might want to believe him for. But I am not going to lose my mind if it doesn't come. Because there is something that's going to come. And that thing is a salvation. So my head has a helmet on it. So if anyone teaches you otherwise about the coming of the Lord, saying that it is in the past, they are not just robbing you of doctrine, they are stripping your head off with a helmet. So you walk without a helmet and your head is exposed. Because they are no longer interested in the second coming of Jesus Christ. They are no longer interested in the rapture. They've been taught to live in the here and now without the sense of destiny, the sense of, of eternity, the sense in their heart that there is an eternity that is coming. There is a Jesus that is going to come back. So they, they invest everything they have now. If they don't get a job now, everything is lost to them. If everything is lost because their head has been exposed and the very darts of the enemy keeps on. So there is a level you can reach in God where your helmet is so strong that no matter what Satan takes away from you, your hope has roots in eternity. So my hope no longer has roots on things here. Whatever can be touched here, my hope has roots in eternity. Then I have a helmet of salvation on my head. But if you don't have your hopes in eternity, then your head is exposed. You can say in prayer, or 12 foot right now, I put on my helmet of salvation. You, 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 you don't have a helmet. It's just an empty declaration. Because you didn't put it on. You don't put it on by way, you put it on by deeds. 
Do not put it in the middle of the game. Abanta batan do buaga ches. Second Timothy four verse eight, I believe. Let's try Second Timothy four verse eight. I believe it's Second Timothy four verse eight. This thing is so important that there is guma crowns out of five. That that the five crowns that are going to be rewards in heaven. Uh, give me first, first, first. Second, second. I said second. I said second Timothy four verse eight. Second Timothy four verse eight. Utige henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This crown is called a crown of righteousness. Why? Because your sensitivity of the coming of Christ will cause you to live in righteousness. So this crown is called the crown of righteousness. Uti, there is therefore laid for me a crown of righteousness, whom the Lord, who is the righteous judge, shall give me a dead day. And not only to me, but unto all them that love his appearing. So there's a crown reserved for people who are looking forward to his appearing. Now let's go back. Ephesians 6. I want to deal with a few things and then we are going to pray. I feel we are going to pray strong tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Verse number 13. Verse number 14. We must stand therefore having our loins get about with truth. Our loins. So truth is a belt. Remember Paul Obalo Ephesians is in, in Rome in custody of the Roman Empire. He's in a house prison. And by asai nama sosha, benga kati o jail, benga kati o jail, sosha, because he was traveling. And Jobe Palale chapter, he's looking at a soldier. Elim katile in this prison. So he picks inspiration from his uniform. So he starts writing. In Ephesians and, 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 and the books of Timothy are full of military language. Because he was moving around with soldiers at that time. Yeah. Uthomani Kali, go Timothy is a strong soldier. Eh? Persevere, no soldier, entangled himself in civilian affairs until he pleases him who enlisted him. So, La, he's looking at this soldier. He's seeing his armory. We are born in Kemba, there is a belt that soldiers wear. Lina in that way, he can slot in his sword. He can slot in his arrows. So, I, 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 ama weapons zako are useless if you don't have a belt because you don't have a place to store them. Number two, this belt, beline letter, elenga ulanga pambili, eenzela, because bebe kichime nda wene zne dust, and underneath, aba koge luto. So, this belt will hold this letter, a patch in front, so that if there is dust coming from horses and chariots, it doesn't hurt them. It blocks the letter patch that, that is strapped onto this belt. So the belt of truth, it's not, it's not only so, you know, it doctrine is so important that everything hinges on it. Amen. Your sword hinges on doctrine. Amen. Your arrows hinges on truth. Yes, everything, truth carries everything. So, you, you, you can't be too spiritual for the weight. Yeah. Yeah. You just cannot be too spiritual for doctrine. You cannot be too spiritual for truth. Yeah. There are people when we speak truth like this, they get lost quickly. And then they pick up in service when we begin moving in the spirit. What is the foundation of the spiritual if it is not truth? Because the truth is not banned. Elibo pukalo so that you are not weak in war. Number two, it is not banned. Like when a zongis kalo so zding empin zichala kona. They are they are just near you, but they are held by this belt of truth. So a belt of truth, which is doctrine and matters relating to the truth of Jesus Christ, they get your loins. Are you with me? And the breastplate of righteousness. Give me the next verse. Verse number 15. Oh, verse number 15. Who your feet short with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I just had a startling vision a few days ago. I shared it with my wife. I saw shoes that were in a river. The river was moving, but the shoes were not moving. And I said to the people, included, to, I said to my wife, go and get those shoes from that river. And by the interpretation of the spirit, I knew that there were shoes that were lost spiritually and we are in a season where they are being regathered 
so that the owners of those shoes are going to be brought back and shoes stand for mentals shoes stand for assignments shoes stand for gospel messages so he says you must short your feet with the preparation of the gospel and that is your shoes to be prepared to preach the gospel of peace at any time verse number 16 verse number 16 we said to verse number 16, above all taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench the fairy dart of the wicked. Do you realize what you are going to armor as sick as Kyle's Vigilum Shanwako? Because you are not expected to turn your back. Zongi Kale Baluela, Zivigeli front, he press plate is a front, he shield you paramise front. All the weapons are in the front because God is not expecting you to turn back over Agako over me getcha. That's a bear move of funnel and umbu. So when you fought for war, you don't turn back. So now all these weapons are for people who are moving forward, who are saying there is no going back because once you turn back, nothing is protecting you from behind. So I take the as paramis is a shield. This shield is the shield of faith. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is now the word of God. Now, I want us to treat to verse 18, and then I am going to be praying with you and then sitting down. And it says in verse 18, give me some power. Praying always. Praying always. With all manner of prayer. Umayati praying always with all prayer. Ushukuti exercise all the different types of prayer. It's a weapon. That's a weapon. Try this prayer. If it doesn't work, switch to another type. If it doesn't work, switch to another type. If it doesn't work, switch to another type until you find the right type that is going to deal with that matter. Then there is so much power in the armor of God. It's just that we don't want to exercise it to the fullest. So they are all manner of prayers and then he begins to name them. Now, there is a prayer he named twice here. Oh, yeah. He says praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So the first prayer is all prayer. The second prayer is supplication. The third prayer is watching. The fourth prayer he repeats that one. He says supplication again. So this is not an error. It's emphasis. We have one supplication open. Praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching. That is a prayer of, of a watchman. This one you can't pray at any time. You are watching. You know watch. Should you are praying respecting the watches, the times. So you can't pray a prayer of a watchman without regarding the watch. So when you are praying this one, this is where you divide your prayer time to different times to different time watches. There are eight watches in total. So you say, for the next three days, I'm gonna be praying at 12369. I desperate for a breakthrough. Take three days dry fasting. When you want a significant breakthrough. Three days dry fasting. Don't eat and don't drink. Pray at 12. Pray at 3. Pray at 6. Pray at 9. 12, 3, 6, 9. So, shooting also was at 8. You wake up at 12, you pray. Maybe until half past 12, you sleep. You wake up at quarter to 3, you pray at 3. You sleep at half past 3. But you observe all these times. You will realize... There are times when you realize Shonipa. Uzozukwa during the third hour, which is nine. They were going to pray on the third hour, which is the hour of prayer. They temple in. Ukonelea so it at three p.m. the holy the, the, the angel appeared to him. Upito it at three p.m. the Holy Ghost appeared to said to him go to the house of Cornelius. So it 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 it. it, it 
it wasn't just oh, Elijah. That is why Elijah, because he understood this type of prayer. Oh, Elijah, he waited for them to pray the whole day. Master Little Pepel, during that time of the evening sacrifice, that is when he arose and said, now it's my time. Because he knew there are moments where the realm of the spirit is, is more open to praying than at other times. Even in the New Testament. Even in the New Testament. That is why Jesus hung on the cross at 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. Significantly so. While Lenga on 9 was what Hulis Pamonen go 3 p.m. Because they are they are watches or times of prayer where the realm of the spirit is more open. That is why witches do their witchcraft at particular hours. They don't just get what can you target and go 12 minute hamburg and fair. Because when men are asleep, that is when the realm of the spirit is more active. Hallelujah. The realm of the spirit is more active when men are asleep. So, Utige, pray with all manner of praying. Supplication. What is supplication? What is supplication? Supplication is an ongoing prayer. It's an ongoing prayer. Malfundu Luke 18. Literally, he told them a parable to this end. That man ought always to pray and faint not. Usually when Jesus tells a parable, he begins by a parable and then he gives the meaning later. But with this one, he gave the meaning first before telling the parable. Because the meaning was more agent than the parable itself. So the, the agent meaning is that man ought always to pray and not faint. Why ought always to pray? Because the prayer of supplication is an ongoing prayer. This is a prayer that does not stop. You, 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 you entreat the judge. As we will in Luke 18, verse number 1. Luke 18, verse number 1. I haven't started teaching today's word. We are still looking for it. Praise God. We are still what? Looking for it. When we find it, you will know that we have found today's word. Luke 18, verses number 1. You know why I said Mungama Rapati Mike? It's because she was there today, labored all day in prayer. And the Lord said nothing in my heart. I said, Lord, this cat is your heart. I said, I prayed, 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 prayed in tongues. <laughs> so, when you are a studious person, you will not be ashamed because you are a workmanship unashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we left. While we were on the way, we were just speaking, and then the Lord dropped a particular word. Uh, I'm going to ask my wife to share it. So I said to her, I lean away when he's done, I'm shooting those women, I'm But no, 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 I'm just going to share uh, if, if there is an opportunity. So I said, the mic must be there in case what I'm teaching is more amplified in her. She can take and amplify it. Praise God. And this is how the meetings in the first century church were like. Amen. That is how the Holy Ghost is going to flow. Praise God. So he spoke a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint. Verse number two. Verse number two. Utikona. Prepare the following verses, all of them. He said there was in a city a judge. This judge did not fear God. This judge did not regard men. And what happened? In that same city, there was a widow. This widow came to him saying, Avenge me of my antidicus adversary. Adversary, why are we judge? Because adversary is antidicus, meaning someone who opposes your rights in a lawsuit. So, an antidicus is someone opposing your rights, where? In a lawsuit. Umuntu law, Oya Enkantolo. 
Afika mela ne na malunge lo ako. Inga kukutua he roams like a roaring lion. Your adversary roams like a roaring lion. It's the same term. Antidikos. So this is now in a realm of a court. So he comes and she says to the judge, avenge me of someone who's opposing me of my rights. There are rights that I should be enjoying, but this adversary is opposing me to enjoy those rights. So please avenge me. Now this judge does not fear God. He does not fear God. He does not regard men. So this woman is just going there hoping because he's not obligated to answer her. But there is something that she does to grab the attention of this judge. What does she do? Go verses number four. In verse number four, she does this. He will not for a while. So this judge did not answer this woman for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, Though I don't fear God, and I don't regard men, yet because this woman, not that I want to answer her, but because she troubles me, meaning every time I wake up in the morning, she's here, he rendering supplication, avenge me on my adversary. I go to bed when I wake up the following morning, avenge me of my adversary. So though I don't fear God and I don't regard men, but because she keeps pushing, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming, she is going to weary me. So I'm going to answer her. My answering her is pushing her away. So it's supplication carries within it persistent Hallelujah. prayer. Hallelujah. There is a doctrine of faith which is not a doctrine of faith. Sometimes faith will pray for the same thing over and over again. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. Hallelujah. <sighs> Lo mama rafiki na ma prayer point sa mash. Fika ne prayer point e yoto. So this is not doubt. This is supplication. Alisho ngu 612. Liti, be ye not slothful, but be ye imitators of them who through what? Faith and patience. Inherit what? The promises. So if faith in a patient, you can't separate the two. So here, this woman kept on coming until the judge got weary of hearing her. And she said, give her what she wants. Oh, Bazalone Bam. Give her what she wants. So his supplication is a prayer where you keep appearing before God. Every time you are praying. What you you are Once you enter his court, you are saying, Lord, I've come with the same matter again. Avenge me of my adversary. Verse number six. Nantige, I, I, I conclusion. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust dad said. Uh -huh. Shall not God avenge his own elect? Are you God's elect? Yes. Shall he not avenge you if you cry day and night unto him? Though he bears long with you, but if you can sustain a prayer point, for long enough. Little though he bears long with you, but he's gonna avenge you because you keep coming. And who Jesus said this judge was unjust. God is a just judge. So yeah. unjust. Yeah. In Akati, if you being men are evil, yet when your child says, Give me bread, you don't give her a stone. If your child says, Give me a fish, you don't give her a serpent. Yeah. How much more your righteous father in heaven? shall give them the Holy Ghost who ask of him, are you better than God? Is the unjust judge better than God? No! So if the unjust judge was able to avenge this widow, how much more the elect? There is an art that comes with prayer. It's an art that the church has lost. You know this type of prayer, as you work it, it works you. 
The reason why we have people who are results driven, but not changed while they seek the result, it's because we, we, we have a, a, a fallen teaching of faith. That says, Lord, I ask for a car, I receive it in Jesus' name, amen, I'll never pray about it again. You will walk for 20 more years because you don't know. You... <laughs> you must be able to persist because faith is persistent. So, if faith includes in it persistence and that type of praying, sometimes God will use that type of your prayer to build even you spiritually, to build stamina in you and to, to subject you to a particular process so that through that process you can be built. So, if you drag prayer long enough, you are giving God long enough time to work on you as well. Because as you appear before him in prayer, he also gets an opportunity to work on you. So, in prayer, it's not scriptural prayer. It's not spiritual praying. Spiritual praying is supplication. As you are in supplication, there are more things that God is going to reveal to you. Praise the name of Jesus. So his application is an ongoing prayer. It's a seeking. It's an entreating. It is when you beg God. Lord, please do it. If you don't do it, no one is going to do it. Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, come through. Oh, Lord, if you don't come through, I'm going to be ashamed. You said in your word, blessed are those who trust in your name because they will never be ashamed. Lord Jesus, help me. I'm not faithless. I'm persistent. And this is where great things are born. It is in this type of praying that great things are born. A, 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 a two-minute prayer justified by the fact that I have faith. That is why I pray short. Did not the Lord Jesus pray for three hours over one prayer point? Was he faithless? No. He was supplicating before God. His supplication is when you pour out your soul for a long time pertaining one particular matter until the Lord comes through. Oh, there are times we've prayed these types of prayers. You know when you are desperate? These are prayers of walking with God. You know, instant prayer will never cause you to walk with God. And if God doesn't love you, you can answer your prayers quickly. But sometimes when God shows you his love, he delays his answer. So that you keep appearing. And as you appear, you can see that you are going to be able to get the money. You are So he creates this opportunity. You are going to be able to get the money. You are going to be able to get the money. You are going The more she, God directed the prayer point, is the more the prayer changed her from wanting to avenge. Wanting to give a prophet, but the more she prayed, is the more her heart about the prayer was changed. The more her heart about the prayer was changed until she said, If you give me the baby, I will give him back to serve you in your temple. So she started by wanting until she's, she ended by wanting to give. So it is this type of prayer that God will be working on you and working on your heart as you continue to do it. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, it's prayers. Now prayers, might pray with all manner of prayers. Suggest a prayer of gathering. It's a prayer of gathering. Maybe I'll close on this one. Ile so and I'm this is when the saints begin together and then they begin to pray together. It, it, it lets his sense of praying with others. Mofundu 21 verse number 13. I'm going to read it from here. 
Matthew 21 verse number 13 and, he, and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves so my house is going to be called the house of prayer we're going to get that there to pray this house is a house of prayer what defines a house is, is the activity done in a house so as we pray in this house we are defining this house this house is a house of prayer because we are praying in it what defines a house to be a tavern is the activity done in that house. So you can't say a house is a house of God by words. There must be an activity that is done in that house which gives it context. So in this case, what gives context to a house is prayer. How do we pray? We pray gathered there. So our prayers can define a simple room to become a house of God. This is how powerful prayer is. Ningla a prayer can change your corner in your bedroom to become an altar. Your corner. Until an angel is sent to camp in that corner. Just because you are praying regularly in it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it, it's corporate prayers. Corporate prayers produce dynamic power and incredible results. Mofundu, to Acts 12 verse 5. Acts chapter 12 verse number 5. You learn there is something that the church did then. Verse 5, Uti Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing. Lady Kamaliti prayer is the same word, proskuin in Greek, meaning it, it, it gives that idea of praying together. It's praying together. Praise God. So, Liti prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, if someone is arrested, what we need to do is to look for a powerful lawyer in town. But the church knew this art of praying. They didn't go for a lawyer. And remember, before this, James was just killed. So this was an emergency matter. But the church knew what we matter. You go on to multi it's urgent. But the matter is urgent. They are telling you something about their faith in prayer. They are saying they don't believe God can attend to urgent matters. You know, so here the church they were saying Peter is in prison and Peter is gonna die if we don't come through now. And what did the church say? They said, Well, we don't trust a lawyer. If we in the putuma, there is something we trust, we're gonna pray for him without ceasing. Mantua without ceasing, but she would supplication. We're gonna from today, no one is allowed to pray for any other thing. We appear for Peter. So the morning prayer is Peter, afternoon prayer, it's Peter. Evening prayer, it's Peter. So they made prayers for him without ceasing, and they made these prayers to God. Masufunda, the next verse is oh, verses number 13. Verse number 13. Let's look at verse 13. And Peter knocked at the door because long time does wa release the angelic intervention. An angel was released from heaven. Little Peter was sleeping, the apostle was sleeping, and an angel entered his cell. Then the angel walked in front of him. As he walked in front of him, gates were opening by themselves until he led him to the gate of iron that leads to the city, the Bible says. When they got to that gate, the gate opened again. Peter went on, the angel gave him an instruction, go to the city and continue preaching this message. When Peter went into the house, look at what was happening. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, so he went and he knocked at the door of the gate. And a girl came to her, and her name was Rhoda. Verse number 14. When, this girl, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate. So she was so glad that Peter is here and didn't open the gate. That is how glad she was. What to, what, to, what to Peter, it's me. The gladness in her made her to run back to the house. Amen. Why? To relieve others of prayer. Because they've been praying day and night. So, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Yes? Verse 15. And they said unto her, you are mad. <laughs> now they are praying for Peter to come. Now, their prayer is answered. Now, they are saying you are mad. But I pray that God answers 
a prayer that when he answers it and you begin telling it that people are going to say you are mad. Why? 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 There's a man we're going to pray for tonight. Is he here? Okay. There's a man we're going to pray for. Why do I say this now? Because the anointing of the Lord is here now. They said to her, you are what? Sometimes God can answer a prayer. That when he has answered that prayer, the people are going to say, you must be joking. Did it really happen? Did God come through? You are mad. These people, they are not Kaparo Mahusele. Limanto Kapara release Peter. And heaven hears and releases an angel. While they are praying, the angel is releasing him. When the answer finally came, it was too good that they believed prayer more than the answer. That is how great the answer was. You know when God breaks forth, that it causes a massive breakthrough. Something that will be visible, this is not the hand of man. When I speak about this kind of a breaking forth, you know, I, 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 I don't know if you are reading this scripture. They said to the girl who was carrying the answer to their prayer, you are mad. Because they didn't believe that a God they were praying to could answer such a prayer in an urgent situation. There is a God in heaven. May God answer your mad prayer. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. May God answer your mad prayer. And may God give you faith to pray mad prayers. Hi! Something that you also cruise with sweet thunders. Why am I troubling the Lord? Because this prayer is mad. Ooh. Have you ever believed God for something mad, something crazy, something mad, something insane, something unbelievable? Or now we turn as if it is called to empty. Same time because it doesn't have capacity to carry that. This is the kind of situation here. Nevertheless, God answered them. Maybe you are here tonight with a mad prayer request. A mad prayer request. Is that man here? Is that man here? Okay. Okay. Just pray in the Holy Ghost, Bazalwan. Because I want us to pray for mad situations tonight. Give me strength here. Give me strength. I want us to pray for mad situations. If you want to see my situations are mad. Is it that what Master Penuli Lungu Lungu Lu? Abantu Bati, you are mad. Usi Mamugele, is he here? He's not here. Okay, because there's too much of disgrace. I want us to. I want you in your heart and mind. Just bring forth. Bring forth a prayer point. Something that you have not mentioned to God. Something crazy, something mad. Just bring it forth. Begin speaking to God about it. Something crazy, something mad. Begin praying about it now. This is the time. Begin praying about it unto God. Something crazy, something mad. That you will need to be constantly affirmed. That this has happened. You will need to be constantly affirmed. That Peter is here. Just bring it forth. Lord, we, we table these prayers with you. We lay them on the altar. We lay them on the altar. We lay them. If you have an urgent situation, just rise on your feet wherever you are. Stand on your feet. 
where you are. Something urgent, something. I'm not unkuluming and a man. I know what I don't want to ridicule your prayer point, but I want something crazy. Something like a Peter imprisoned. I'm speaking about such a matter. Such a matter. Such a matter. Such a matter. Because as we raise our prayers, the Lord of heaven is going to release his angel. He's going to release his angel. And his angel is going to begin visiting that particular situation. I see. I see. I see. The angel of the Lord released. I see. The angel of the Lord released upon situations upon prayer points upon circumstances i see the angel of the lord released upon it begin to raise it up in prayer right now begin to raise it up in prayer I want you to push forcefully. I want you to push forcefully. Push forcefully in prayer and supplication. Lifting up your voice in prayer. The answer is going to be made. The answer is going to be made. The answer is going to be made. Is gonna be met. I declare the answer is gonna be met. The answer is you are gonna be need. God is gonna prove to you that is God and He dwells in heaven. He sits on a throne, He sits on a high and lofty throne that is fairy doing what He wants whenever He wants. He's gonna put a seal in your heart of His deity, of His authority to prove to you that is the God of the universe and nothing is too hard for him nothing is too hard for him come like a mash a mighty rushing wind come like a mighty rushing wind roll like thunder from heaven my father roll like thunder and give these people a sign that indeed you are God that answers a prayer you are a God that answers a prayer is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? We say no, we say no. We say no, we say no. The Lord is removing burdens. I see the hand of the Lord removing burdens, removing burdens, removing burdens and heaviness, removing burdens and heaviness. Lord God, the God of a covenant, God of a covenant, God of a covenant, God of a covenant. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything? Too hard for me to do. I am that I am. Lift up, lift up the prayers, lift up the prayers, lift up the prayers, lift up the prayers. This is how the church in Jerusalem was praying. Kamanta katapalara. Release Peter. Lord intervene. Lord intervene. Release Peter. Use any means. Use any measures. Release Peter. 